It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. We have a question from upstairs. Yeah, Kenny Bruce with NASCAR scene. Tony, um, Denny and Kyle were in there earlier, and they talked about how you could catch a guy in front of you, but it was really difficult to get around a guy, especially if he just ran the same line that you were running. Did you have any of those difficulties out there today? I heard the first part of it. I didn't hear the very last part of it. I, I heard him talk about the, you know, Denny and Kyle talking about the lines and stuff and how hard it was to pass it. You know, what? And I guess the you know track position was big, but I mean there was a portion of the race there where uh, Rudiman was leading, and I think Kyle was second, and Boyer was third, and they were all three just bam, bam, bam stacked up there. Uh, and if anybody made a mistake, you know they were they were getting passed. But um, you know I think in that last segment, you know the, the later the day goes, uh, the better everybody uh, gets their cars, and and the harder it is to have an advantage over somebody else. And when you can get out there and you can lead like that and you can run your own line uh, and and not necessarily be pressured from you know the back bumper so much it's uh it's easier for you to be able to take care of your car and take care of your tires and it makes the guys behind you uh they they try to get try to make that deficit up early in the run when when the tires are fresher and the cars feel better because i think everybody's cars uh, you know halfway through the run start to get tight it's just to what degree and whose is worse than the others so um, you know, if you could sit there and be out in the lead halfway through a run, you had a good good shot at being able to hold them off, and that was provided that you didn't abuse your tires doing the same thing that they were trying to do, getting caught up. But you know, Denny ran a smart race too. I thought. I mean, uh, you know, he he ran up to us early in the run, and and um, you know, I think he got in a spot there where he was having to work really hard to to try to close in those last five car lengths, and uh, you know, so he, I think. I don't want to speak for him, and you guys probably know this already because he, he talked to him. But I mean, it seemed like to me he just kind of took care of his tires and and you know took a break from the pressure, and uh, you know just kind of kept enough pressure on us to keep it to where I couldn't just totally relax. But at the same time, uh, took care of his stuff, and then with about 20 to go, I mean he he made another charge and and uh, you know got within four car lengths of us, and uh, you know you could tell uh, the spotter and Mark Robertson has been with me for a long time and and. You know, not only is he telling you where you're at and what's going on with cars around you, but he's like he's beating you getting in, but you're you're gaining it back on the exit. But he's he's really trying to to get in as deep as he can to make up as much ground as possible. And you know um, that when you do that, you're creating a lot of brake temperature, and with a lot of brake temperature, you're increasing your front tire pressure. So, um, you know, it was a matter of at that point when he made that charge. I think that's when we started getting into traffic, and and I felt like our car was still really maneuverable in traffic. We could. Uh, I really wasn't that good if I moved up. Uh, I seemed to get tighter uh, in the center of the corner, but uh, as long as I could move down the racetrack and had a, either the lane that I wanted to run in or, or below that, then, then I was in pretty good shape, and that seemed like that was what you know kept us ahead of him and kept him from getting any closer, and then we got into some more of those lap cars, and it seemed like we actually pulled away once we, we got into more of that traffic, and, and uh, you know he probably had used up every bit of good that was left in his tires at that point but i mean that's that was i felt like that was a smart move on on denny's part uh, of how to to kind of you know wait till the end there so to speak and, and not burn it up the whole run trying to get to us and and probably lose third or, or you know drop back to lose second drop back to third or fourth by trying to get it that early i mean he, he wrote it out and uh, you know made the most of it to the end kenny did you have a follow-up yeah for dave uh couple of things one have you lost a race yet and secondly when you when you decide on that last pit stop you know you've got one game plan in place and you said you looked down and you knew what other guys were doing you know how quickly do you realize that and have to make the decisions that you're going to change what you guys had planned to do it is a split split decision uh just a gut decision um you know, we have Tony on a, a limited schedule, and uh, this this uh, 20 Joe Gibbs Racing team is definitely trying to eye that owner's championship, but we're trying to accumulate as many wins with these cup drivers as we can. So uh, at that point, I was in points racing. I was, I was trying to 
put Tony in a position where he might have a shot at winning. Uh, it was a gut, and I think I said it before I thought about it. And when Tony left the road, I said, "Man, I don't know. I hope this works, but I'm not so sure." Um, yeah, I if I'd know. have been smarter, I'd have sat there and said, "Well, there you did it. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's all on you." But <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, it, yeah, uh, I remember the races we lost a whole lot better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go up front here. Baxter Holmes with the Boston Globe. Dave, could you just talk about how special this win is for you, especially here and with your dad being here? Yeah, I said it a couple times. You know, we, we had some really special wins this year. You know, Tony's first win at Talladega, Tony's first win at Darlington. I knew those tracks meant so much to him. And to be able to accomplish them uh, was so gratifying. And then you go to Richmond, and that's Denny's hometown track. and. Uh, going into those races, you put so much pressure on on yourself because you want to do so well for these drivers. Um, you know, these drivers are the bread and butter of our program. Anytime you can give them something, uh, it, it means a lot to yourself. Uh, I never thought about winning Loudon. You know, we we worked really hard. Um, we we weren't that happy with our Milwaukee car, so we we logged a lot of hours. Uh, me and my engineer and staff, we logged over 50 hours and three days at the shop preparing for this race. But it wasn't because it was loud. It was another race that we wanted to win. Um, but the last five laps, I realized, oh, th this this is a pretty big one for me. And uh, w when he crossed the stripe, it was it was very emotional. Um, Darlington is big. Talladega is big. This is probably the biggest. Uh, it's good too because dad was about off the the guest list because he's been a few races and we haven't got it done so i thought he was bad luck so we'll bring him back for a few more now <laughs> any further questions all right gentlemen thank you congratulations